Well, we all have choices to make. You made choices to come to church this morning, so that was a good choice. And no doubt the Holy Spirit was involved in that choice. You have choices to make this week. A lot of choices we, we all make. Sometimes we struggle with indecision. Should I do it or shouldn't I do it? And, and that, that's not so good. The Bible says that if we're double-minded, that we're unstable in all our ways. So it's important to make good decisions, to, to know what to do, to know where to go, to know which path to take. And if we don't know and we're struggling with it, it can cause a lot of stress in our life. What have I said to you this morning? I know someone who can always give you the right advice, who always has the answer, who always can show you which path to go, and he's available 24-7. How many would like to know who that person is? Well, say hello, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is always there, always available, always caring about you, always knows the right direction to go. Our role is to tune in to what the Holy Spirit is saying and to have Him guide us through this. Jesus, Jesus promised that He would send the Holy Spirit to us and that He would keep us on the path. It's, it's important for us to hear this over and over again. You, you could be watching this morning, maybe one of our campuses or here or online, and you say, well, I know all this. I know the Holy Spirit. I've heard this message. I've been a Christian for a long time, and I understand that. I think we, we, it will be review for a lot of us, but there is something about staying in tune. We, we need to stay in tune. I asked Brad last night, I saw the guitar sitting over there, and I asked Brad, how, many, how often do you have to tune the guitar? And he said, daily. And I was thinking maybe once a month or something, but he said, no, daily you have to tune it, tune it up. You know what Sunday morning is for us, you guys? It's a tune-up. <laughs> <laughs> why? You know why we need a tune-up? Because like a guitar, if you get bumped around or you go through changing environments, you go out of tune. And it's really easy in our Christian life to get out of tune with the Holy Spirit. So this morning, even if you've heard this before, it's a tune-up. We want to stay in tune, dialed in to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, you're looking for a radio station and it gets a little fuzzy. You have, to, you have to take time to just dial it in. That's what you're doing this morning. So give yourself a pat on the back. You're getting yourself tuned in. Way to go. It's the right thing to be doing today. Saturday morning prayer. We have Saturday morning prayer. And uh, this past week, I was sharing a little bit about a song that some of you might recognize. It's a great song. A lot of people have redone the song. It's a song about Ebenezer. Even though that's not the title of the song, it's known for that. It says, here I raise my Ebenezer. And Ebenezer was a meaning for a rock that, or a stone that spoke of an important event. And uh, in the Bible, there was a time where Samuel in the Bible put down a rock as a remembrance where they had won a victory. And sometimes we need to look back and say, God was with me in the past. God was with me there. God was with me there. God's going to be with me again in the future. You've got times in your life, right, where you know God was with you. He answered that prayer. He answered that prayer. And it's good to remember those moments. And the, as much as He guided you in the past, He's going to guide you in the future. The Bible says in the last days it will be perilous. I think we are in perilous times. There's a lot of uncharted water with the advent of AI and all the other things ahead of us. People say, we're not sure what's ahead of us. I know somebody who is sure, the Holy Spirit. None of this is a surprise to him. We're living in an hour, my friend, where we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit like never before. Because there are a lot of things we just don't know. There's no manual for this stuff. There's, no, there's no, no history for this. We're in uncharted waters as a world. But the Holy Spirit knows the way through it. Really important in this hour that we stay tuned in to the Holy Spirit. He wrote a song, and in that song he says this author by the name of Robert Robinson. And in that song, there were these words, come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing, to sing thy grace. Tune my heart to sing your grace. This morning is about tuning our heart into God's grace. We don't deserve the Holy Spirit. We don't deserve his guidance. It's quite something. If you want to go to the, the gym across the street and hire a trainer, a guide, it costs you a lot of money. If you want to climb to the top of Mount Everest, you hire a Sherpa and a guide, it costs you a lot of money. Well, Jesus paid for your guide. 
24-7, he's going to guide you through life. And what we need to do is tune our heart to his grace. In the song, he goes on to say, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. You're not the only one who's sometimes prone to wander. Yeah, this author was the same way. And then he says, here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Lord, seal my heart in you. Take my heart. Seal me. Keep me. Guide the Holy Spirit through all that's going on in our world today. We need to have uh, this regular tune-up. You know, when it's in tune, it sounds nice. When it's out of tune, it just it sounds, it's off. And when your life is in tune, it's nice. But when it's out of tune, not so nice. <laughs> it's good to be in tune with God. And when we're, when we're in tune as a congregation, even better. I'm, I'm not a singer. I've already admitted that to you on a number of occasions. And if you sang beside me, you know that. You don't have to have anybody tell you that. Uh, Cheryl is really good at singing four-part harmony. And I honestly, I didn't even know what the four parts were. I've had to be reminded what they are. And there was a time where they asked me to sing a certain part, and then they usually just say, Dave, just sing the melody. And, and I don't even know what the melody is, so <laughs> I can't find that. So I, I, by admission, I, I, I'm not musically talented. I, I didn't get that gift. Uh, but I can sure tell when it is in harmony. If it's not, it sounds like a cacophony, but when it's in harmony, it sounds beautiful. And, you know, the Bible says how wonderful, how beautiful it is when the brethren, when the church dwells together in unity. It sounds fantastic. And when I'm in unity, in tune with the Holy Spirit, and we're in tune with one another, and we're, we're singing together, it's really for the Lord, and to Him, it's a sweet-smelling aroma. It's a symphony. So today, and the days to come, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We need to constantly be in tune with the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of other voices that are out there. Uh, if you have your Bibles, go to John chapter 14. Would you say with me this morning, thank you, Lord, for the book of John. This is near the end of Jesus' life, and he's talking to the disciples. And I thought I'd just highlight a couple things out of John 14 to 16. I'm just going to highlight a few verses. These three chapters, they're saturated with the Holy Spirit, Jesus' instructions about the Holy Spirit. In chapter 14, verse 1, he says, don't let your heart be troubled. And we could have a troubled heart today, right? Why were their hearts troubled? Because Jesus said, I'm leaving. And they said, well, who's going to take care of us? Where are you going? Uh, what are you going to bring back when you come? Same things kids ask when mom and dad leave. And they were wondering, when I was younger and my parents went away, my big question was, who's going to look after us? Who's our babysitter? And maybe your children have asked the same thing. You know who's taking care of us? The Holy Spirit. That's who Jesus sent to take care of us. In chapter 14, verse 16, he said, And I'll pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. He's in you. He's in me. Next week, we have a great message. Pastor Chris is going to be speaking, and he's going to talk about Christ in you, the hope of glory, and what it means to have Jesus living on the inside of you, his spirit in you. you you're a spiritual being. Amen? We, we have, we're a three-part being. We have this earth suit, this body. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotion, and then we have a spirit, and that's where the Holy Spirit connects. He connects with our spirit. And so he says, he will be in you. In John 14, 23, if you love me and, and keep my word, my father will love him and will come to him and we will make our home in him. We will make our home, plural, trinity. We will make our home in him. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Uh, verse 26, John 14, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Isn't that good? Bring to your remembrance all the things that I've said. This is what's been given to us, the Holy Spirit. Uh, John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth. Isn't it good to have a Spirit of truth in a world like what is truth? Yeah. One of the biggest concerns that we hear for Generation Alpha is they're going to already think, well, if AI says it, it's true. If I've read it here, then it has to be true. 
Aren't you glad for the Holy Spirit who will guide us into truth? Yes. John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. If I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send them to you. To you. To you at Pitt Meadows. To you there in Richmond, in Arizona, here, online. He sent it to you. Come on. That's good news, right? Let's not just... As one preacher said, don't just read the Bible. You have to read the Bible. (laughs) This is for you. It's got your name on it. So I will send the Holy Spirit to you, a guide to you. I'm going to preach myself happy this morning. (laughs) This is so good. I love the Holy Spirit. You know, when when I grew up as a kid, I heard stories about the Holy Spirit speaking to people. And I always just wanted that in my own life. I remember my dad telling a story how my grandfather in the former Soviet Union and the Red Army was coming to their house. He didn't know this, but the Holy Spirit told him, go run, go hide in the wheat field. He stayed there, and then the Holy Spirit said, it's safe to come back now. When he came back, the Red Army was walking away. Had he not gone, they would have taken him to Siberia. I thought, that's the way, I want to hear God like that. I, I want to know that Holy Spirit. I want that real relationship with God. And he has that for you. I remember hearing of another uh, preacher, and he, he told us how the Holy Spirit showed him how to buy an orange grove in Florida, speaking to him. And then later on, there was a frost that came, and, and he said, Lord, you gave me this orange grove. It's your orange grove. Please protect it. You know, all the orange groves around him got frost and were frozen out. His was supernaturally protected. When I heard that, I said, I want, I want that kind of relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want to be guided in my business affairs. I want to be guided with my family. I want them to help me, teach me, show me things to come. Jesus said, I will send you a helper. Wow. You have to want this. He said, no, I think I got it. I'm pretty smart. I got this figured out. I've done okay so far. But then it won't happen. You have to be desperate for the Holy Spirit. You have to hunger for the Holy Spirit. And so, and, and then, like I mentioned earlier, keep yourself to, in tune with the Holy Spirit. John 16, 13, when, the spirit of the truth, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will glorify me. Just a couple verses out of John 14 to 16. So the Holy Spirit, he is our guide as we go through life. Well, that's good news. Well, what, what should I do? Pastor, practically, help me. How do I get in tune with the Holy Spirit? Number one, stop listening to the wrong voices. Our culture is speaking so loud. There's so many voices out there. You have to say, Lord, I will dial into your voice. I want to hear your voice. I'm not going to copy what the world's doing. This is what Paul says in Romans chapter 12. Don't copy this world. Don't copy the behavior, the customs, the culture of this world. Don't copy their behavior. Don't tune into that. You can't tune into the culture and say, I'm going to follow that, and then say, I'm going to follow God at the same time. You have to tune in just to God. Wholeheartedly follow Him. That, that's so key. Let God transform you to a new person by changing the way you think. Then you'll learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. God's will. God's will is always the best decision, the best choice. How do I do that? Well, I can't be copying the world and then expect to hear from Him. I can't expect to hear from God if I go to a horoscope or to a a Ouija board or to a seance and then say, okay, God, would you speak to me? I mention that because I've literally prayed with believers. They say, I can't hear God's voice. And then the, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge and said, well, are they involved in horoscopes? Yes, I check it weekly. I said, well, no wonder you don't hear God's voice. I mean, it sounds simple, but no, put that aside. That's for somebody this morning. You're wanting God to answer your prayers, but you're, 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 you're taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I'll have a little yoga, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then you say, oh, by the way, I want a little bit of Jesus. You won't have the Holy Spirit guide you if it's a little bit of Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit guide you if it's all Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, you're my Lord. I'm... You are my Lord. I'm totally, totally giving my life to you. You have to, you, 
Jesus said, you can't serve two masters. Here's the deal. You can't, you'll either love one or despise the other. You have to serve one. You have to take up your cross and follow me. He says, it's gonna, you're going to pay a price for it, but I will guide you into truth. When you're desperate enough for truth like that, then, then you'll find it. So stop listening to the wrong voices. Yeah. A lot of voices in our world today. More so than ever. You went back 200 years. You didn't have that many voices. Today, there's so much going on. So much. So much happening even in the spiritual realm. We're living in last days. If I could somehow peel back the curtain and show you, here's what's going on in the spiritual realm, you'd see a lot of activity. Each one of us, God designed our spirit with a receiver. God designed my body with eyes. He designed my mind to think. And he designed my spirit has a built-in receiver. It's designed that way. You came from the factory that way. You're designed to hear spiritual things. You're designed to connect to spiritual things. The choice we have to make is, God, I'm going to connect with your voice, not all the other voices that are out there. And he, he'll make it clear what his voice is. I have a very interesting app that I downloaded that I wanted to show you today. And uh, I'm going to have them put it up on the screen. I have my app open right now. I'm, don't worry, I'm not looking at you. I am looking at all the different signals that are in this room right now. You can't see them, but this is what's going on. The red pyramids, those are Wi-Fi routers that are within distance of me right now. And they're all sending waves. Yeah. And then you see those, those white dots up there? Those are all satellites. And if I, if I hold it on one, it'll tell you which satellite it is. Blue ones are navigation. White ones are communication. So this is what's going on all around you. And the spike, those big white spikes, those are cell towers. Do you have any idea how much... How many waves are all around us? It's incredible, right? What a, this is kind of opening up, pulling back, allowing you to see through this technology the different waves that are going on around us. And if I, if I want to connect to a router, how many of you have to go and say, which network do you want to choose, right? You, you, don't you do that on your phone? You say, oh, I'm, I'm going to get a stronger signal. Or you go to a new place, and you don't want to use your data, so you go and you connect to a network. You have to make that choice. Likewise, I need to make a choice what network I want to connect to. I choose to connect to God's network. That's what I'm choosing. I'm choosing with my life. I, this, your phone doesn't work if you connect to 100 networks. You have to be focused on one network, right? So likewise, you have to be focused on one spiritual network, the Holy Spirit network, <laughs> right? He's sending a signal stronger than all the others, and he, you have a built-in spiritual receiver that says, I want to connect with you to guide me in the spiritual realm. And when we do that, he says, I will direct you. I will guide you. You might be saying, well, how do I do that? How do I connect? What helps me get connected? That's the big piece. Well, uh, you heard Norm's testimony. A lot of it is by choosing good company. Proverbs 13, 20 says, become wise by walking with wise. Hang out with the fools and watch your life fall apart. Get connected to the right people. Get connected to others that follow God. This Bible, this is the tuning fork. This is the instruction manual. The same Holy Spirit that's guiding us is the same Holy Spirit that inspired the Bible. And so we, we hear His voice. We get connected when we're reading His Word daily. Two, second point I want to make is we have to understand that as a child of God, that the Holy Spirit, He really, really wants to speak to us. Now, this may just sound, of course He does, but we have to make the point. Because sometimes you think, well, He'll speak to others, but He won't speak to me. I want to make this clear this morning. He wants to speak to you. If you are His sheep, He speaks to you. Look at this verse. You know this verse. John chapter 14, verse 27. 
my sheep, it doesn't say my spiritual elite, my, the person that has the titles, the doctorate, the blah, 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 I speak to them. No, he says, my sheep. I love this verse. Why? Because we're all his sheep, amen? My sheep, what do they do? They hear my voice. It doesn't say they might hear my voice. They, they should, they could, they can. No, it says they do. Guess what, folks? This is, this is meant to be so simple that a child can get it. Where it gets complicated is when we overthink it. Where we, we, we make too much of it, perhaps, in the wrong way. Instead of just saying, this is simple. I'm a sheep. He speaks. I hear. I hear. Now, don't do this. Don't go, okay, God, uh, I have got, uh, I got to get out of the door here in 10 minutes. Whew, okay, yeah, I got a lot of big stuff coming up today. So um, here, here we go. All right, I got a business meeting. God, please help that goes well. Um, yeah, I got a, oh yeah, my, my daughter's going through a hard time. Please help my daughter. Uh, yes, and oh, God, help the poor. Amen. All right, go, here we go. <laughs> and, and, you, and you hope it lands on God's answering machine, and maybe he'll get back to you if he has time. That's not how this works. <laughs> no, 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 no. A thousand times no. It's us in relationship, communing, pausing, listening. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. I know them. That speaks of intimacy. I know them. I stand at the door and knock. I commune with them. They commune with me. We have a meal together. We dine together. That's when the listening happens. If you want to hear his voice, it's often it jumps, a verse jumps off the page of the Bible for you. Has that happened? Yeah. Or somebody, you're in a life group and somebody says something, oh, that's it. Or you're in a service today, you're in a, you're in a worship time, and you hear God speak to you. I find that it's catalytic to hear God's voice when I'm with, gathered with other believers and there's this harmony of spirit, that's when I feel I'm, the signal so strong if you like to hear his voice. The signal strong when I'm reading his word. The signal strong when I'm alone and in prayer with him. There's times it's just louder. A lot of it has to do with getting rid of those other voices and just focusing in on him. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they what? Follow me. We're all familiar with GPS. Uh, if you have your phone, your phone's got a GPS built into it, right? And, and to use your phone, the GPS on your phone, uh, what good does it do if you, if, you don't, if you hear the instruction from the GPS, but you don't follow it? I, I mean, this is common sense, but we have to follow what he says to us. This is the doing of the word that we talk about. We need to, we need to be following him. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, it says, In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, now watch this closely, He has spoken to us by His Son. By His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through Him He also made the universe. By His Son. That's the... NIV translation, by his son. If you go to other translations, it sounds very much similar. In the New Living Testament, it says, and these final days he has spoken to us through his son. So the question is, as I was studying this, is it by his son or is it through his son? Is there a difference? A little bit. So if this is my GPS device, I want to be led by the GPS. So I'm led by the phone. How many know I, can't, I don't have any GPS without the phone? I need the GPS, right? So I'm led by the GPS, but I'm also led through the GPS. The message is coming from the satellite through the phone to me. So it's by the phone and through the phone, by the GPS and through the GPS. I need the device in order for it to happen to go through. So we're led by the Son. Why? Because He remade our spirit. That leading doesn't happen until you allow Him to come into your heart. First of all, you've got to get this thing set up. Am I helping somebody this morning? Yeah. You, you get it set up. You, you got to get it set up. Some of you are like, oh, I want God to leave. Well, then set up your GPS. You, it's there. You need to activate it. 
Turn it on. How? By accepting Christ into your life. Now the by is there, and then the through happens. The will of the Father comes through that from point A to point B. By is the mechanism, and through is the means. It's happening through that to you. Man, the Holy Spirit is, is coming to us through this. So, through is where we get this. It's like the word intercessor. Intercessor is to go between one and another. Jesus is our intercessor. He's the link, you guys. He ever lives, Hebrews says, to make intercession for us. What's Jesus? He's so passionate about this. He says, I'll send the Holy Spirit. You guys, it's going to be okay. Coastal church, it will be okay. I will guide you. I will be your link. I'll get it through. I'll get it from the Father. You've, re- you, you've accepted me into your heart. This message will come through. I will intercede for you. He's always interceding. He's always, this is, it's on 24-7. I'm not going to get through my notes. <laughs> Romans 8, 34 and 35. It's not in your notes, but it's a good verse. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who is raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or sore, danger or sword? What is Paul saying here? Nothing can break down the communication between you and the Father when you're linked up with the Holy Spirit. You can be sitting in a prison. You could be in a business meeting. You can be driving down the highway. But nothing can break the communication between you and the Holy Spirit if we just willingly say, God, I yield to you. I yield to your Spirit speaking to me, and he will speak. Boy, that's good news. Okay. My piano player has arrived. (laughs) That means you're done. (laughs) All right. We're going to close with this verse. Proverbs chapter 3, 5, and 6. Here we go. Trust in the Lord. Trust faith. Or we could put here, because of our illustration, connect. Connect. You know, often when you connect, is it a trustworthy connection? I mean, it's trustworthy to connect with God. So connect, trust, put faith in the Lord with how much of your heart? All your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. That doesn't mean you don't use your understanding. You don't get saved and throw away your brain, your thinking, your reasoning. No, we're we're led by the Spirit, Watchman Nee said, but we prove it with our mind. Your spirit is just ahead, but your mind has to do a lot of work. And he still wants us to use common sense. Amen? <laughs> so we, 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 we base our decisions on the leading of the Holy Spirit in our heart. We lean not to our understanding. Of course, we use our understanding to accomplish what he's asking us to do. In all our ways, not some of our ways, all our ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. This is where we want to end up. We want our paths to be directed by the Holy Spirit as we journey through life. How how is that going to happen? Through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, the big thing is, like you heard in Norm's story, is that connection has to be made. Our spirit is there waiting to be activated, if you like, to be born again connected with God the Father. How is that possible? Only by accepting what Jesus did when he died for our sins, rose again to new life, and putting our faith and our trust in him and inviting him into our heart. Then that connection's made. And you're on the the spiritual network of the Holy Spirit, and he'll guide you. I'm wondering this morning if you've made that connection, if you've made that commitment trusting in Him with all your heart. All your heart. I'd like to lead you in a prayer this morning as we close. And I'm going to ask you to make that connection. If you never have, we need the Holy Spirit for our guide, for our health, spiritually, mentally, spiritually, and of course, for eternity. This is a big decision. Don't make it lightly. But if you have not connected 
with God through the Holy Spirit and what Christ did for you, I believe for many of you, this is your moment. You don't know what comes ahead of you. You've tried this. You've tried that. Turn your heart to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this Sunday morning, I open up my heart. I choose, God, to connect with you through what Jesus Christ has done for me when he died on the cross for my sins, rose again to new life that I could have life. Today, I put my trust in you and ask you into my life. Amen. <laughs>